Our go-to guy when we talk matters rugby has been Justin Marshall since we began the platform in May last year. Justin is here at the Rugby World Cup. He is calling games for Supersport South Africa. If you remember, Sky TV didn't want him. I thoroughly, utterly believe he is the best analyst that New Zealand has produced in years in terms of talking rugby. He's very honest about the All Blacks. He's very forthright with his opinions. And you don't get a lot of that. You can count the former All Blacks well, probably on your thumbs, who actually speak honestly, openly about this team. There's kind of a bit of an unwritten rule. I call it the fat neck club, that once you've actually been one, that you just don't actually ever criticise that team. Now, criticising a rugby team, like criticising any sports team, doesn't mean that you hate them, doesn't mean you don't like them, doesn't mean that you don't want them to win. But as sports fans, what we actually want is we want analysis, don't we? We don't want cheerleading, we don't want to sugarcoat things. And the reality of it is that this All Black side, since 2019, has failed to consistently deliver. That's four years worth, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about all of a sudden jumping on a bandwagon that says, hey, this you know team for this particular year hasn't done well. Track it back to the semi-final against England in Yokohama. Ever since then, this particular bunch of All Black players have created un wanted record after unwanted record you name it we all know these losing to argentina losing to argentina at home losing to ireland at home losing a test series at ireland at home record defeat against south africa at twickenham losing a pool match at the rugby world cup what have i left out of here so now we face perhaps the biggest test that we have had at any rugby world cup if we lose this match we come home as the worst team that we've ever sent overseas at any of these tournaments, and we've hosted two of those. The All Blacks are up against it. It is not often we go into a knockout match at a Rugby World Cup where we are underdogs, and we are. And there's a very good reason for that. Justin Marshall joins us again, as he does on the platform, with an expert eye over what's going to happen this coming weekend. 81 tests for the All Blacks. Justin, have you ever been this pessimistic, or maybe you're not, but have you ever felt like we are going into this situation as the underdogs and All Black side facing a Rugby World Cup quarterfinal. Oh, look, I always believe in the All Blacks, Marty, um, and, and what they're capable of achieving and who they're capable of beating in the world, and that's anybody. Um, however, if you were to ask me at the start of the tournament, let's go back a month and say the team that you would prefer not to meet in the quarterfinal, I would have said Ireland. I would have preferred France or South Africa. I think their DNA is, is easier to break down um, the way that they play. Uh, whereas Ireland just so well balanced. Their defence is amazing. They're the best defensive team in the world. Uh, their attack is really well balanced, all orchestrated by Johnny Sexton, um, and their back row and their forward pack formidable. And they, they're just a really well drilled side, and they're number one in the world for that very reason. So, look, it, it's not to say that this is uh, an absolute disaster for the All Blacks, but um, they're going to have. We are going to have to be at our very, very best, best uh, to beat this Irish side because they have not missed a beat right from the opening game. They've looked really good. You know, I've talked with you for a number of years now, and I don't think I've ever, ever heard you so impressed by another rugby side on the planet. That's what Ireland have done to you. Mm. No, and you're probably right. Um, I just I just feel that they just play a very good, um, really sensible style of rugby um, that has some flair. Uh, it equally has physicality. Um, you know, like Scotland went 18 phases against them and, um, and they just defended and offended and then eventually forced them into an error. You know, that, that's, that's just knowing each other so well. And Andy, Andy Farrell hasn't messed around like the All Blacks right from that opening game. He's put all his big guns down, out there. He hasn't really changed his team much. I could have named their side that they got, I can name their side that they're going to name at the weekend. Um, they're just very well organised. Their game plan's good. They've got the best short passing game. So when I say short passing, like their players are nice and tight. Um, they bring defenders in. Then they have Sexton floating around the back. Arke comes short. Ringrose comes short. You know, James Lowe floats around. They just know their method so well. And, and each player knows each individual skill and strength of each other. Uh, and, and, you know, you can't... Teams like that are uh, they're, they're the best in the world for a reason because they're just so methodical. You know, you're talking about them like we used to talk about our All Black side. I mean, with that kind of ruthless efficiency, it's their killer instinct as well. Do they have enough of that to be able to go right through this tournament from here? Oh, look, I don't have any doubt about that. Like the, You know, to, to be number two in the world before the Rugby World Cup started and then obviously, you know, eventually end up at number one. Um, 
all everybody was saying was they, they don't know how to get um, past any final series in the Rugby World Cup. They've never done it. Mentally, they're going to be weak. Um, so they were, people were throwing stones into their glass house even before the tournament started and saying that they won't be able to get through to a final and win a final. Like, wh- where the hell does that come from? Like, his- history plays no part in a current team. A current team is what it is, and they're a formidable current team. I have no doubt in my mind that they've got the psyche, they've got the management, um, they've got the coaching, and they've got the players and individuals to go all the way to this Rugby World Cup final and win it. No, no doubt in my mind. They're very capable. 81 test for the All Blacks, Justin Marshall, who's calling it for Super Sport. What do the All Blacks have to do then to bust them, to break them down? Not be frustrated by the way that Ireland defend. And, and um, you know, that, that's not easy to do. It's the same way that France, to a degree, but more importantly, South Africa defend. They narrow that field on you. They force you into a zone where you have to play, instead of the full width of the field, you have to play in the middle of the field. And that creates frustration. It creates anxiety because you try to do things. You see space, but you can't get the ball there. So we have to have our leaders, our generals, the likes of Aaron Smith needs to really step up. Richie Moonga needs to step up and they need to say, OK, this is not easy, but we just stick, stick to it. Stick to task. Persevere, persevere, persevere. Uh, you know, we, we tend to panic when we, we, when we can't get the ball to space we can see. And we try, we try all sorts of ways to get there that are, that are risky. And, and that's what you want to do. What we want to do is play non-risk. We want to still be creative. So, you know, risk isn't stopping creativity, but it is making sure that you are very assured when you create the opportunities, you pounce on them, and you need to stay calm in doing that and stick the process. Do you also believe in the idea of actually keeping the scoreboard ticking over? Because that's a frustration as well. I like the idea of being three, six, nine, twelve points ahead and then seeing the other team have to react to that by doing things that they may not want to do by trying to score points that aren't there. Yeah, there, there is very much, um, you know, good equation in doing that. But equally, you know, you've got to think about how you accumulate points and, and pressure accumulates points. Look at what South Africa did to the All Blacks at Twickenham. They turned down threes and they kept going to line out, kept going to line out, pinned the All Blacks in the 22. Eventually, it, it resulted in yellow cards. And all of a sudden, you're down to 14 men. And then instead of accumulating in threes, bang, you get a try conversion seven. Then you take your three, you're on 10. So I think we've got to get our balance right. Like at the end of the day, we don't want to go out there and think we're just going to try and win penalties and kick goals. We've got to be All Blacks. All Blacks play with ball in hand. All Blacks like to test defence and they, 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 they are resilient. You know, I think we've got to... Yes, when the opportunities are there, take them. There's no bonus bonus points now that's going to, to get you qualifying out of the pool. That's all done and dusted. It's simply about winning. But you've got to make sure that you are managing that game plan in a way that you are also creating doubt and pressure on the opposition. Justin Marshall then is with us. So the guys that you're hanging around with, with South Africa and that, how confident are they about their team's chances and what do they also think about our team's chances? <laughs> Um, well, we, we did a show this morning, um, and myself and uh, uh, Yanni Shamagi, who's, uh, who was hosting this morning, actually, but former prop for the Springboks, uh, Giovanni Kirk and Brian Habana, Shimmy and I both picked the All Blacks to win. The other two didn't. <laughs> so right. put it that way, they're 50-50 right. split. Yeah. Um, but I think at, at the moment, they just see the – they watched and were on the ground and saw that um, Ireland-South Africa game and how impressive Ireland are. And it was at an intensity and a level that the All Blacks – haven't played at for nearly a month. They, they haven't been in, in a test match like that for a month, the All Blacks. Let's face it, we knew that was coming. And more, most recently, the Springboks have witnessed it, um, you know, right there, up, up close and personal, and, and saw how good Ireland were when they beat the Springboks in Paris. So they are very impressed by them, believe me. But, yeah, there's a little bit of fence sitting going on. I think they're kind of cool. I think it would be kind of cool, though, equally if South Africa won, New Zealand won, then they would meet each other in the final because they quite like that thought. <laughs> Well, of course they do. In terms of the All Blacks, do you know in your mind who you think Ian Foster will select as opposed to, and is that opposed to who you would like to select? Or do you think that there's just simply 23 names and they are the best that we've got and we could all, all just about select them straight away? Uh, I think he knows that the side he wants to select. We're not all going to agree with it. I know I don't agree with it. But he will go to the stock standard side that he believes can get the job done for him, which will mean Bowden Barrett will be at fullback. Obviously, you've got um, you know, uh, T- Talia on the wing as well, who, who's been a more recent all-black, but he- he'll, he'll have his place. And that means Will Jordan doesn't move the fullback; He'll stay on the wing. You know, the, the rest of the team pretty much takes care of himself. He, he believes and trusts Sam Kane. 
Um, you know, very, very much he knows the side that he will pick, and I don't see him deviating from that. The bench is probably the only one that um, provides a little bit of speculation and interest. So, in the end, is is are there going to be any upsets in these quarterfinals? Do you think? Pick me, South Africa versus France. Uh, well, I think South Africa are going to win that game. If they can win the first quarter, if they can win the first 20 minutes, I think they're more than capable of winning winning this match. Um, and obviously, I'm going to back the All Blacks, but uh, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. What about the other two quarterfinals? Um, I think Wales uh, will win. Um, and I equally feel that uh, even though Fiji, we all want them to win, and in my heart, I'd love them to. I just think England and quarterfinal rugby have been a World Cup, so World Cup winners... They know how to get the job done. I think they'll just suffocate the Fijians. So I think we'll see England, Wales, South Africa, New Zealand. That's my pick. You're on the. What are you doing going to London for? The, you were meant to be in Paris for the World Cup. I've oh, given back to the game, Marty. Given back to the game. I'm going to go to a school and do some coaching. Um, and uh, I'm actually slipping in a game of golf at the, the Royal Berkshire as well, which should be enjoyable. I Looking can hear the to. train departing, last Justin. Train departing. It is, mate. <laughs> Jump on. It's on its way. We'll I see you at the quarterfinal. the weekend, mate. Yeah, same. All right. Beautiful. Cheers. Devlin. You've got to love sports. The platform.